Yo, what is what going on? Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hopefully you're all uh, healthy, feeling okay, and uh, having a good day. If you guys watched the last video, you would've saw that I pulled the motor out of the Miata, and uh, I already got it engine bay pretty much cleaned up. Now, uh, this video, I'm gonna start working on getting the seam sealer out, because I do plan on stitch welding this car. At least, I'm gonna start with the engine bay. Once the engine bay is done, I'll see where I am on well, mostly patience because I'm very impatient, but you know, I'm gonna try and take the interior out too. At least get the carpet out of the way and then get some stitch welding in on the inside. And then if that goes smoothly, then I'm gonna try and maybe get into the trunk a little bit and uh, do some stitch welding in there. Just really stiffen this car up. Uh, being a convertible and 30 years old, you know, it's uh, it's kind of flip, flimsy, flippy, flippy, flimsy, whatever. So I'll be doing along the frame rails here where the braces would normally go, along the top cowl. Uh, along the shock towers, along the frame seams, along the pinch welds, all of it. So, let's go. These are my favorite tools to use when I'm uh, getting rid of seam sealer and stuff. Some of the spaces you have to just tough it out with a chisel and stuff, but these nylon wire wheels on like an electric drill that you can just kind of like set the trigger to so you don't have to hold it down and uh, it spins really fast, these things just rip apart the uh, seam seal and it doesn't gouge the metal around it like a wire stripper does so I'm gonna be using this and you know get some eye protection because this stuff does fling gets stringy you don't know if you got any little rocks or stuff that could fling up in your face you want to be safe and uh, yeah let's get this started and yeah time-lapse now These cats showed up. DJ's doing his uh, wheel bearing for the 14th time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm still working on this one shock tower. Got a pretty good amount done. Having to use a screwdriver now to get in the tight spots. And Miss Part A has decided hey. to lend a hand while they're here. Yo. Yeah, progress is uh, slowly but surely being made. Hopefully I'll get to weld in a little bit later today, but a lot of seam sealer. Got a good amount of the driver's side cleaned up. All the seams are wire brushed. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stitch welding on this side and get the frame rails along here and whatnot. DJ is still back there working on his wheel bearing and uh, April's still hard at work on this side. But I'm gonna go ahead, welder's already set up. Get to welding. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so satisfying. <laughs>
hear it through the wind. Well, I'm gonna probably call this a day because sun's going down. Got all the stitch welding done. Got it all primed up. Uh, I guess tomorrow I'll just give it a quick scuff up. I'm not really going crazy with it, so just a nice scuff and shoot. I gotta try and get some aluminum foil and find a way to wrap this all semi neatly and mask off the condenser a little bit. And then I'll just throw like a tarp or something over the subframe and the AC lines, but I don't know. Hopefully it'll look halfway decent, but at least the welding's all done. Hashtag nugget. <laughs> Two days later now, I uh, went on a little drive yesterday for the weekend, just kind of get away from the car for a little bit. So I did test it with some purple that I had laying around. Didn't really like that shade of purple, so I found some darker stuff. And then uh, I did give it mostly a scuff with like 400-ish, 320 and 400 for the most part, just along all the rough spots and stuff that I could reach. So I'm gonna go ahead and I bought some aluminum foil. I'm gonna just start masking stuff up wrapping it around and for the uh, condenser I'll just tape some cardboard to it or something course port or the uh, subframe I'll just throw cardboard or a trash bag or something over it and uh, yeah just get this all wrapped up so that way I can just kind of give it this good old rattle can job and make progress I guess I ended up taking out the master cylinder or the brake booster anyway. Um, hopefully I can get this back on with no issues. I hate bending hard lines because I'm just really uncomfortable with it. So I gave it a little scuff up and then I just sprayed it out. And uh, now I got pretty much most of the things masked. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some trash bags down here and just, uh, I guess, start spray painting and hope for the best. I'm going to try and put some Vaseline on these black pieces so that way I don't get uh, paint on those. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this turns out. This is by far the most half-assed I've ever prepped anything, but I, like I said, I know that this is all gonna come back out again, um, probably in the next year or so. I'm not too worried about it. It's not no show car. I'm gonna go ahead and prime the bay, even though I did a pretty bad job of scuffing it up. Uh, this should stick, and then that way the paint can actually stick to the primer. Okay, I got one coat of primer in the bay. That's pretty much all I have because uh, I don't want to mix the two brands that I have because I know I have Rust-Oleum, which is what I just laid, and I have some Krylon, but the Krylon doesn't like to mix uh, with the clear coat that I'll be using, so I just did the one coat. That should be good. Now, this is the color purple that I'm going to be doing. It's kind of a dark purple, and I think it should look good with a gold flake. Well, base coat is laid. Did eh, roughly two coats. So I just did all the main areas. You know, I'm not worried about the bumper here where the bumper cover is gonna, you know, cover. But the engine bay itself is pretty, pretty well coated. It's a little bit lighter in person than it is on camera. It looks darker on camera for some reason. So I got a little bit of a clear coat left over from when I painted my car 
So I just went and bought another sprig on this morning. I just used these cheap Harbor Freight ones because they work for what I need, um, these HVLP ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a batch, find something to mix it in, and uh, yeah, lay some clear. Hopefully this turns out okay. Well, clear coats laid, uh, put about three pretty heavy coats. I just made a small batch, probably five ounces worth. And obviously the engine made is a small, uh, small area. So I was able to get some good coats down. Loving the flake though. See, now the, now the camera's making it look like it's lighter than it is. I don't know, you guys get the idea though. It doesn't look bad. I think it'll look good after I paint the valve cover like wrinkle black and just have everything cleaned up, you know, clean up some of the wiring and yeah, it'll look nice. Really can't complain for being a rattle can job that was pretty half-assed to be fair, so I'm pretty stoked on it. So something else just came in the mail actually for the Miata. Uh, I did tell you guys I am going to be boosting this thing and so I ordered a turbo manifold. Now, um, before anybody goes and hates on me, I did order the OBX manifold which is essentially like the eBay manifold. Um, and it's, yeah, it's basically an eBay manifold. Um, it just came in the mail. I pulled it out of the box already. I was looking at it. I checked the flatness of the flanges. They're actually pretty darn flat. The uh, turbo flange is actually flat and then the, where it mounts to the manifold itself or to the head, it's barely, oh, I got it on my welding table. It's barely warped and uh, you know, doesn't look all that bad. The welds on here could be a little bit better. Let me try and get you some natural light there. Um, overall, the inside, pretty clean. Decently clean in here too. But just to be safe, because I've had bad experiences with eBay manifolds and you'd think I would've learned my lesson, but uh, I don't have the money to go and spend $500 for the Flying Miata manifold or even more on other company manifolds. So I bought this for 130 bucks. And I'm gonna go over it with uh, with my own welder. I've got my Everlast right here, so I'm gonna just double up the welds. If I can get some welds on the inside, I will, I'll try, but um, yeah, we'll see. The main part that's of concern on these manifolds is the turbo flange itself, because obviously this holds a lot of weight, so pretty much what I need to do is obviously go over the welds like I just said, but then I'm also gonna add some bracing in here, um, along here, and uh, yeah, that should be decent enough because I think this is just going to be my primary issue. But yeah, just to be safe, I may even add two little pieces of rod that go from here to here and here to here as well. But I'm going to make this turbo manifold work because I want to go boost already because this may out of slow and slow. Uh, it will be a little bit before I can go boost, so i got to finish ordering the parts. I just ordered the gasket reseal kit, a clutch, uh, pilot bearing, throttle bearing. So once the engine is resealed, oh, and time my water pump, and once that's all back together, all I have to do is order. Uh, ECU, which I'm gonna try that speedy EFI because a lot of people have recommended that to me over the Mega Squirt in terms of price. Uh, and then I just need, I already have AN fittings and lines for water lines. I have to order the turbo, which I'm gonna do the same turbo that I have on the uh, Del Sol out there, which is the Max Speeding Rods GT2871. Good little T25 turbo, I love it, no issues with it. And then, uh, you know, just a few little ins and outs. Uh, wide band, might do a fuel pump. I have to try and find some Mazda RX-8 injectors. So it'll be a little bit before I go boost, but now that I've got everything kind of in order, um, once I have the rest of the money, I can order the rest of the parts and get the engine back in the car, get the car back on the road, and then the turbo stuff I can add later because I don't really have to have the engine out of the car for that. So to brace the flange right here, what I've done is I've taken some flat stock that I had laying around and I just trimmed up. I got my inside measurement here between the two uh, spaces and I'm pretty much, if I can get my gloves to work with me, just gonna weld it in there like that. Now these holes are threaded so I am gonna have to keep it centered. So uh, this is just one piece thick that I just cut in half 
So both pieces fit perfectly right in there, just slide right into place and I can give it a tack and then I can give it a little bead around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and double up on the weld on the outside and then I'm gonna go and um, get this welded in place. The manifold all's uh, all good now, even though I won't be able to use that manifold for at least a couple weeks yet. Um, really the only thing left that I can do in the engine bay until the engine itself is ready to be resealed, which is going to be fun. I've never, never touched a Mazda engine before like that, so that's a whole different video for sure. Uh, but the only thing that's left is the wire tuck, so uh, I will save that for the next video though. I don't want to drag this video out too long. Some of you like the longer videos, but I kind of just want to make this its own video. I do have to take a little paintbrush and kind of touch up in the corner over here. Um, the bags just kind of, uh, yeah, the bags were moving around when I was shooting, so it didn't really let me get a good job in there. So I'm going to go take a little paintbrush and just, you know, spray some paint on the paintbrush and then wipe around in there, and that should be good. At least blend it a little bit, but overall, this is going to be pretty much the video. Hopefully you guys I think the paint looks good. I think it looks good still. It's all dry now, so it's still shining. But yeah, that's gonna end this episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to drop a like down below. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you consider subscribing. And this is honestly goes to show you guys that, granted I had the clear coat already on hand, but I mean, you can go buy a can of 2K clear for like 20 bucks at a paint store, at your automotive paint store. And that's gonna be pretty much the same thing. You're just not gonna get the same coverage as shooting out of a gun, obviously, but it's like $6 paint job. You can't go wrong with that. And uh, anyways, guys, do it a lot for you. See you in the next one, and uh, yeah, peace out.